Any dinosaur enthusiast who has read up on Jurassic America's legendary Morrison fossil formation will know that this wonderful segment of prehistory is famous for something truly awe-inspiring – gigantic sauropods. Across those wooded floodplains, some of the largest animals ever to grace the surface of planet Earth congregated to feed and migrate, with several famous faces visible in the mix. Amidst the thunderous footsteps of Diplodocus herds and browsing groups of Barosaurus, towered something else, related more distantly to its longer, more gracile cousins. The animal in question was also a sauropod, but one unlike the others it shared these Morrison plains with. With a proportionally short tail for its kind, a looming vertically held neck, and colossal limb bones, this was Brachiosaurus, a staple of any book, television show, or reconstruction concerning Jurassic life. Today, whilst continuing the theme of covering iconic dinosaurs from the Morrison Formation, we will be exploring the life and natural history of Brachiosaurus, or Brachiosaurus, in a deep dive of detail. We will examine how this mighty reptile lived, what it looked like, how it interacted with its environment, and ultimately how it was discovered over 150 million years after it disappeared from the face of the Earth. Join us as we take you back to the time of the dinosaurs to explore Brachiosaurus, one of the most amazing sauropods ever to walk the Earth. Brachiosaurus altithorax, the sole known species of this dinosaur, would have been, without a shadow of a doubt, the most recognizable sauropod of the Morrison Formation. Thriving in what is now western Colorado from roughly 154 million years ago up until 150 million years ago, this was by far the tallest dinosaur present on the scene estimated to have grown up to 13 to 15 meters tall in extreme cases. Combine this with the fact that the dinosaur's length is thought to have measured between 20 and 22 meters, and you have a colossal animal indeed. The holotype specimen of Brachiosaurus, thought to be the remains of a subadult individual, is estimated to have weighed anywhere between 28 and 49 metric tons, based on studies surrounding sauropod body mass. The name Brachiosaurus altithorax roughly translates into English as deep-chested arm lizard, referring to the dinosaur's torso and forelimbs. When compared to the animal's hind limbs, Brachiosaurus's front legs were colossal, giving the animal a shoulder height of about 7 to 8 meters. These legs must have been like huge pillars, columnar in shape, but surprisingly slender when contrasted with the sheer size of the animal. The specific name refers to the dinosaur's deep body proportions in comparison to those of its relatives. The size and shape of Brachiosaurus's torso likely won't have been the first thing to catch your eye about this colossus, but instead its neck. Like all sauropods, Brachiosaurus boasted an immensely long neck, with an almost comically small head in comparison sat atop it. Unlike some of the other sauropods from the Morrison Formation, Brachiosaurus held its neck upright instead of horizontal or low to the ground. Moreover, the neck was poised in a gentle S-shape, curving slightly in the middle. Immense muscles and adapted air sacs within the dinosaur's neck would have helped the structure stay aloft and high off the ground. At the opposite end of the body was situated a comparatively short tail one that would aid in balancing the dinosaur's top-heavy structure to avoid injury. The tail was immensely muscular in order to aid the animal in keeping itself upright and measured roughly 8 meters on its own. These features, when combined, served to create a very different kind of dinosaur to the diplodocids of the Morrison Formation. 
whilst dinosaurs such as Diplodocus, for example, held their necks and tails parallel to the ground, Brachiosaurus would tower over the tops of trees and shrubs that line the open floodplains. How did Brachiosaurus compare in terms of size with the other Morse in formation sauropods, though? While the animal stood much taller than any other dinosaur it shared the North American plains with, it was not quite the largest. Apatosaurus is thought to have grown to just over 23 meters on average, for example, and Diplodocus may have reached as long as 26 meters from its nose to the tip of its tail. Brachiosaurus was first unearthed by human beings in the year 1900, when a partial skeleton, excluding the skull, was excavated in the Colorado River Valley, not far from the municipality of Fruta. The bones were estimated to date back to around 153 million years ago and were unearthed by Elmer S. Riggs and colleagues an American paleontologist working with the Field Museum. $500 were pledged by the museum to fund Elmer and his crew, the equivalent of about $18,500 in modern money. Much of the work took place over the summer, and it was the humerus, a bone within one of Brachiosaurus's towering forelimbs, that was discovered first. Today, the site is named after Elmer S. Riggs, Riggs Hill, with a plaque in place commemorating the moment Brachiosaurus was introduced to the world. It wasn't until the late August of 1900 when the bones were all extracted, wrapped, and returned to Chicago. It took a whole week and 38 crates, with a combined weight of almost 6,000 kilograms, just to pack the bones for transport. The bones initially collected by Riggs and his crew included much of the right side of the body. Present from the expedition were elements of the thigh bones, arm bones, hip bones, shoulders, vertebrae segments, and bones from the tail. Some of the bones had been damaged and contorted due to the ravages of weathering over time, which caused some slight confusion amongst the crew when it came to determining exactly which bone was which, with the humerus initially being mistaken for a femur. A lot of the skeletal elements unearthed from the dig were missing, with the bulk of the fine belonging to the back of the animal's body. The immense neck and small skull were nowhere to be seen, but enough information was collected to inform scientists that this was surely a massive sauropod dinosaur. Riggs would eventually propose that the front half of the skeleton may have been washed away by a flood or water current as the animal was decomposing. The back half of the animal must have already been covered in sediment as the water tore the animal in two resulting in an incomplete set of bones for scientists to find millions of years later. The first writings on the find was published by Riggs in the form of a report in 1901, where he attempted to describe the animal based on the known remains, but did not yet provide it with a scientific name. He noted the colossal forelimbs and gigantic proportions of the body, which would have in life combined to create an animal that superficially resembled an enormous reptilian giraffe. Two years later, the dinosaur was given its scientific name, with Riggs specifically noting the fact that the forelimbs were disproportionately larger than those belonging to any known sauropod. The skeleton would, once properly prepared, go on to become a staple attraction of what would become the Chicago Field Museum. It was first exhibited at the Chicago World's Fair within the Fine Arts Palace, the museum's first site. The bones were not immediately mounted in a lifelike state, similar to the huge reconstructions of Apatosaurus or Diplodocus we see in museums today. This was because of the incomplete nature of the remains unearthed by Riggs, and the missing 80% of the skeleton would have been based on guesswork at this stage. 
Eventually, a plastic skeleton would be mounted in the Field Museum at the north end of the Stanley Field Hall. This mount, and copies of it, would go on to do the rounds at many notable locations across America, including the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago and Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park in Florida, which would be a thematic piece for the Dino Land USA segment of the park. Subsequent Brachiosaurus discoveries have not been frequently made. Select remains have been unearthed from Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming, as well as further discoveries in Colorado, the most complete of which is thought to be a subadult specimen. To this date, we know Brachiosaurus from elements of its vertebrae, limbs, feet, ribs, chest, shoulders, and partially from its neck and skull. There is much we could still learn about this immense creature as the years progress. So, based on the information collected from this dinosaur's bones and remains, how do scientists propose that it lived? Starting with its uniquely arranged leg bones, scientists can estimate that Brachiosaurus was a browser of vegetation from the very tops of the Morrison Formation's trees. The fact that the forelimbs were larger would have meant that Brachiosaurus's body was pushed up even further at the front, allowing its titanic neck to reach food sources no other dinosaur of its time and home region could reach. The fact that its body was positioned like this would have made Brachiosaurus a highly specialized herbivore, and one that did not need to expend much effort in lifting its neck up to the tops of the trees if the bulk of the work was already done by the positioning of the limbs and torso. Furthermore, Brachiosaurus's neck would have been made even lighter by the presence of internal air sacs embedded along the length of it. These sacs helped the dinosaur to keep its neck aloft and were connected to structures within the lungs. Through the use of these air sacs, the dinosaur effectively reduced the density of its body and made the animal more mobile when feeding. All of these adaptations combined together to allow Brachiosaurus unrivaled access to the lush greenery growing in the woodland canopies of the Morrison Formation. The region's other sauropod inhabitants were much better suited to grazing or browsing vegetation at lower levels. This meant that there was always an abundance of food that could be exploited by these massive herbivores. Another interesting point about Brachiosaurus's feeding habits is that it could not chew its food. Studies on the jaws of the animal have shown that they were capable only of moving up and down in an opening and closing motion, and not left to right. This meant that any food entering its mouth needed to be pre-shredded in order for it to be able to swallow without chewing. To combat this issue, Brachiosaurus evolved many chisel-like teeth perfectly designed for scraping edible vegetation from the branches of trees, which were directly transported down the colossal neck and into the deeper digestive system. It is thought that due to the fact that the animal was so large, Brachiosaurus may have been able to keep its body at a constant temperature. This is known as gigantothermy and happens as a result of animals being able to hold on to body heat for longer as their massive size allows for much more of it to be held in. This would usually mean that Brachiosaurus had a very high metabolism and needed to eat a great deal of food each day to keep itself energized. However, the air sacs within the dinosaur's neck and body would have helped it cool down and reduce its need to constantly feed, allowing more time and energy to be spent traveling socializing, or finding a mate. Brachiosaurus and its relatives possess strange skulls in the sense that they have a prominent crest-like feature projecting from the top of the head. In times past, scientists believed that the nostrils would have been situated on top of this crest of bone, 
which perhaps would have allowed Brachiosaurus to travel underwater and still continue to breathe. In actuality, it looks as though this structure may have been a resonating chamber, helping the huge dinosaur to project its calls and vocalizations out across the plains of Jurassic North America, assisting it with staying in touch with members of its own species. It became clear from about 1903 and onwards that Riggs had not discovered another relative of prior known Morrison sauropods. His Brachiosaurus was distinctly different from the likes of Diplodocus or Apatosaurus, and as such assigned the dinosaur to a family of its own namesake, Brachiosauridae, in 1904. Brachiosaurus is easily the best-known dinosaur in this family to date, and many species within it share the same striking body posture and similarities in the neck structure. All Brachiosaurids had immensely long necks, attached to comparatively small skulls, and they were all specialized feeders of vegetation which grew at the tops of the trees in their respective environments. Many of them shared uniquely shaped chisel-like teeth with Brachiosaurus that enabled them to strip vegetation from branches without chewing, and they were all very, very large animals. Brachiosaurids were widespread throughout their time on Earth. Individuals are known from both North and South America, Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia with just Antarctica and Oceania presenting no evidence for their existence. The Brachiosaurids appeared about 160 million years ago, in the late Jurassic, and the last of them died out around 93 million years ago, in the early Cretaceous period. Brachiosaurus's closest known relative was an African dinosaur, similar in size and shape to it, known as Giraffa Titan. It lived on the open floodplains of what is now the nation of Tanzania, where it towered above every other dinosaur that shared the region with it. Another close relative is a European brachiosaurid by the genus name of Vouivria, which is known from eastern France. Other dinosaurs within the family include the relatively small Europosaurus from Germany, Sonorosaurus from Arizona, Lusotitan from Portugal, Pelorosaurus from England, Galvasaurus and Suriatitan from Spain, as well as Veninosaurus, Abidosaurus, and Cedarosaurus, all from Utah. One look at reconstructions or fossil specimens from these dinosaurs will show just how similar in form and often size these animals were to Brachiosaurus. With their long front limbs, towering necks, deep, broad bodies, and comparatively short tails. It shouldn't come as much of a surprise that Brachiosaurus remains, to this day, one of the most popular and well-known dinosaurs amongst the general public. Humans tend to be obsessed with the very biggest of dinosaurs and Brachiosaurus, as one of the tallest, has captured the imaginations and interests of people the world over. This fame has skyrocketed since the dinosaur appeared in many pieces of popular media concerning dinosaurs, from Jurassic Park to Disney's Dinosaur. We may only have fragmentary remains of this awe-inspiring reptile, but that seems to be more than enough for it to have become a reincarnated symbol of the prehistoric world everywhere.